Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking sunscreen, specifically my favorite K-Beauty sunscreens. You know, I do have a lot of sunscreen content and reviews here on my channel that I've done throughout the years. You can check them out in my sunscreen playlist, but I realize I haven't actually like rounded up all of my favorites into one like master video. So that's exactly what today's video is all about. These are the five sunscreens that I currently am going back to time and time again. They do share a lot of similarities because these are just the ones that my skin really enjoys. They're all chemical sunscreens. Most of them use new generation chemical filters. They're all K-Beauty formulas. They don't really offer sweat resistance. These aren't necessarily like my sport and active sunscreens, but these are just my favorite daily go-to sunscreens that feel really comfortable and breathable on my skin. So if you're ready to find out my five favorites, ranked in order, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. So my number five pick is the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus four. And I would say if I had to boil it down to you, what makes this sunscreen unique among my favorites within this video, the superpowers of this sunscreen is really its beautiful glowy gel finish. Now this sunscreen is all chemical filters. They're using six different filters here, but it is a mixture of new generation chemical filters and older generation generation chemical filters. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think when we use like the terms like new and old, we think Ugh, old must be bad. And there certainly are drawbacks um, to the older generation filters. There are some weak points as there are with every single like sunscreen filter out there, right? But with the older generation chemical filters, they have been around for longer and they definitely do have some weak spots. They're not always the most stable just on their own. Um, sometimes there is the potential potential for um, them to irritate sensitive eyes or skin. That's kind of like the weak points generally that they're known for. Newer, newer generation filters kind of improve upon that. You know, they take what's been working with the chemical filters and try to improve it with stability, photo protection, and comfort on the skin. And so a lot of people do find that the newer generation filters don't bother their skin as much, don't irritate their eyes. And so they are definitely seen as new, next, and the best of what's out there. But that's not a bad thing to use both in combination in a smart formula where the new filters can really kind of help lift up the weak areas. And this is the one that I clung to during that 2020, 2021 era of the Korean sunscreen scandal. And I always say Korean sunscreen scandal with a little bit of sarcasm because I just find it to be a very dramatic kind of way to reference the event, but that's kind of how we're referencing it. So if you recall around that time, a lot of sunscreens were discovered to not be living up to the protection that the label claimed on the bottle. They would say it was SPF 50, but it was really in testing revealed to be closer to an SPF 20. But the outcome of that was that we've had a real renaissance with sunscreens, right? Um, we've definitely seen stricter regulations. We've seen more testing. We've seen brands going the extra mile, having um, independent verification beyond just what their manufacturer is telling them. So I think that it has led to positive things within the industry. Um, and and, and better improvements. But during that time, man, <laughs> it was really an anxious time. Like all of my favorites are just completely falling flat on their faces. They're like no longer an option. Like who can I trust? Who can I turn to? This sunscreen. This is the sunscreen that got me through that time because if I'm remembering correctly, this sunscreen actually came out a little bit before the scandal occurred and this sunscreen was never, ever, ever a pulled off the market. This sunscreen always held up to the scrutiny it was put under during that time. This formula never failed. It always offered the protection that it stated it was offering. And so this was just like that comfort, you know, sunscreen for me during that time. So I have fond feelings for it just because it got me through a really rough time, but it is a formula formula that I really do enjoy still to this day. The texture, it lives up to that watery gel uh, name. It's not a true, true gel. No sunscreen really is, but it does have like a lotion gel type of consistency. When you apply it to your face, you do feel a good amount of hydration. That's where that watery term is coming in, but it does apply to the skin in a protective, but 
thin and breathable layer. And that's where I think we're getting that gel kind of quality to this. It's definitely like a thinner gel layer on the skin than like a thicker silky cream layer. Now the formula I do find to be kind of wet. I mean, I think the dry time on this is good. It's about 10 minutes, which I think is pretty average for most sunscreens, but it does have a very dewy sort of look to it once it is settled onto the skin. And I named that as a unique and good selling point of this sunscreen. I love um, a dewy look. It's definitely what K-Beauty is well known for and something they really enjoy within Korea is a little bit more dew on the skin, but that's not going to work for everybody. Like this is a list of my skin's favorite sunscreens, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these are going to be universally great for everybody. This finish may not agree with people who do have a little bit more oil on the skin because it is going to really enhance that. That being said though, it is still very comfortable on the skin. It's not heavy and greasy. It just has a dewy kind of top finish to it. So all in all, it's a really nice smart formula, I think, very protective, something that I've trusted for many years, but also something that just feels really comfortable, lightweight, and breathable on the skin. So my number four pick is the Goodall H. Cordata Calming Sun Cream. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus four. And the superpowers of this sunscreen are just that it is so light that it has a really nice neutral finish to it. And for some people, a superpower is the fact that this sunscreen does not contain niacinamide. This is a fully chemical sunscreen. Everything in this video is. It does use four different filters and they're all new generation filters. Now what I really like about this sunscreen is the texture because they're calling it a sun cream but honestly I don't think this is truly a cream texture. This texture is actually very similar to the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Gel. It's that lotion-y kind of gel-like consistency. It goes on in a very thin extremely breathable layer on the skin while still feeling protective, but it just doesn't have an overwhelming thick or moisturizing feel. This um, definitely has a little bit of hydration, but this is one of those magic kind of sunscreens that you can kind of forget that you applied it because you're just not feeling it sitting on top of your skin. I really, really like that texture because more often than not, like on certain occasions, I like a thicker feel with my sunscreen or something more moisturizing, but more often than not, I don't. I, I want to like set it and forget it. I don't want to be thinking about my sunscreen all day long. And this is the type of formula that kind of allows you to do that because the texture is so good. No white cast here, no pilling. Um, again, like I said, these are favorites of mine. So um, if there is an issue, I'll let you know, but they probably wouldn't be a favorite if I was encountering those types of issues. This just really feels amazing on my skin. And this is something that I really do recommend for all skin types. You know, like I was saying, like not every um, product that I like may work well for you, but I have a lot of confidence in this one. And it really comes down to the finish of this sunscreen. It's not shiny like Isentree is. It doesn't have that dewiness to it. I would say that this is a neutral or even a semi-matte finish. I just really don't see the finish on my skin at all. I always have a little bit of dew just because I do enjoy some nice emollient skincare under my sunscreen, but this doesn't add to it at all. It doesn't take anything away from my skin either. It just, it's very much, very neutral, um, not glossy, not shiny. It's just a really nice understated type of sunscreen. And so I do think that this is gonna work for oily skin, not only because of that semi-matte finish, but because it is so light and breathable. I think if you're in a super duper hot climate and you don't like thick layers, think about something like this because it just feels so good. Or if you're just somebody who maybe just doesn't like the feeling of sunscreen, because I have to, like I said, not every day am I like excited to put sunscreen on, but with a texture like this, it makes you know the habit of sunscreen so much easier to keep up with when you have a really pleasing texture. And that's really what I think about when I think about this sunscreen, it's just, neutral. It respects my skin. It protects my skin, but it doesn't remind me all day long that it's on my skin. So my number three pick is the Beauty of Joseon Rice Plus Probiotics SPF 50 PA Plus 4 sunscreen. Now this sunscreen is different than everything else in the video because this is a truly moisturizing sunscreen. That's really the superpower here. This offers a nice amount of moisture to the skin while not being greasy. Yeah, it's a fine line and this sunscreen definitely walks it 
easily. Now this right alongside my number five pick, the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Sunscreen, this is a long time favorite for mine. And this was, you know, after the whole, it's hard for me to do this video without talking about like the Korean sunscreen scandal, right? Um, when that had occurred, um, I was clinging to that Isentree sunscreen for a really long time. And I was kind of afraid to branch out and try other things because it was such an uncertain time. And the one that really impressed me um, kind of coming out of that that era and out of that anxiousness right was this one from Beauty of Joseon and I really deeply fell in love with this and this became my next new favorite and right alongside of the Isentry this is the sunscreen in this whole video that I've emptied the most tubes out of um, definitely you've seen this in countless empties you know how much I love this so much and I really do enjoy the creamy texture of this like I said this is very different than everything that we've talked about so far that's had more of a gel type of consistency this is truly a cream consistency but it is not heavy on the skin it is not really thick and it doesn't have that really overly like rich and emollient feel like some european sunscreens or even american sunscreens can have like a thick gloopy really really rich sort of feel it kind of like it always sits on top of your skin it never really kind of like absorbs or settles into the skin when I say creamy and moisturizing, that is not what I'm referring to. This texture is a little bit more airy than that, um, but it still offers a good amount of balancing moisture to the skin. It feels really nice. It's comfortable. It works well with the skin. It doesn't work against it. It doesn't sit on top. And there is a bit of a do to this for sure, but I don't even think it's as shiny as isn't tree, which is kind of odd for being a thicker texture. You would think maybe the dew would be heavier here, it's not. I think it's actually maybe like a quarter of a step down from what Isentree is doing to the skin. I don't find the dew to be overwhelming on the skin. It's just a, a kiss of dew. And um, the moisturization here feels really nice. I know so many people, and I recommend this a lot, so many people save steps in their skincare routine by using this as their moisturizer and sunscreen all in one. That's really how this is kind of a magic product. I think the moisturizing abilities of this make it something that if that fits your skin type, um, this can actually minimize your skincare routine. Who isn't looking to do like save some time in the morning, right? Now, interesting you may have noticed that this is the exact same filter combination sunscreen filter combination as the good all sunscreen and we actually have one other sunscreen that is using these same four filters for protection but they're all a little bit different now tinosorb m is a new generation chemical filter that is being used here and this sunscreen filter is fantastic but it does um, sometimes have a little bit of a white cast to it which is surprising if you're always considering chemical sunscreen as no white cast and mineral sunscreen as white cast it's surprising to learn there are chemical sunscreen filters that can have a white cast and this is always coming down to the formula the other filters involved the amount of the filters that are being used the other ingredients that are being used what are they trying to achieve with the texture and stuff so just looking at the filters is only giving us half the story but when you see this ingredient you um, definitely want to be on the lookout for potential white cast with the good all I don't see it at all with this sunscreen, I have to get really picky, um, but that's my job, right? That's what you expect of me. I have to get really picky, but I can see a little bit of it. It's a little bit more obvious when you first apply it to your skin. It definitely does settle down in like the five to 10 minutes that it takes to absorb and settle on and dry on the skin. Um, and then it just, it really, it, it doesn't really bug me with my skin tone. It's kind of a medium light skin tone. Um, I can see it a little bit, but it's not bothersome. Uh, if you are more blessed with melanin, you might notice it a little bit more. We are not talking gray cast. We're not talking full on mineral sunscreen. We're talking just a tiny bit just a tiny bit. So I like to point that out, um, you know, cause it, it may make the difference for some people, but I think it, in the grand scheme of all the sunscreens and stuff out there, I don't think it's all that bad, but I do like to point it out. So my number two pick is the Cynic Enjoy Super Mild Sun Essence. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus four. Now the unique thing about this sunscreen, the superpower, right? Is that it's offering high protection 
at a low price. That's right, this is my budget pick. Now, um, you know, most of the sunscreens in this video are fairly affordable, about $20 and under, but this sunscreen routinely retails at about $10. Sometimes it's like $2 more, sometimes it's like $2 less, but around that $10 mark is such a sweet spot for budget conscious shoppers, right? And like, trust me, I am one of them. Um, and especially with sunscreen, you know, you can go through the tubes so fast that you really do need to budget more money for your sunscreen purchases. And some months, you know, you don't want to be spending $20, $30 on a sunscreen. So $10 is a real sweet spot. I really, really appreciate that this is so affordable. All that being said, though, this actually does offer really good protection. So here we go again, talking about that 2020, 2021 sunscreen scandal era. I can't get away from it. Um, but during that time, uh, we were scrutinizing every single sunscreen that hadn't fallen yet. We were scrutinizing them so much, not only because we were all looking for more culprits or right, culprits, right? But we were also looking for what sunscreen can we trust? This sunscreen consistently tested above SPF 50. People are trying to topple it, they just could not. This offers a lot of protection, but at such an affordable price, and I just think that that is fantastic. Now this is using five all new generation chemical filters here. And you know, beyond just it being very affordable, I really do enjoy this formula. Now this texture, it may look similar to some of the other products that we've talked about. It is slightly different. It's not quite as light and gel-like as the Goodall and the Isentree, but it's not quite as moisturizing or creamy as Beauty of Joseon. So we're talking about a middle of the road sunscreen right now. They call this a sun essence and I, I, I would agree agree with that. It does have an essence skincare kind of feel on the skin. There's a nice amount of hydration here with a kiss, just a real light amount of moisture to this. And almost like, could a sunscreen actually make your skin feel like minorly plump? Because I feel like this kind of plumps my skin just ever so slightly. That's where we're getting kind of that, that skincare feeling. It just has that like nice hydrating, silky, kiss of moisture, slightly plumping kind of feel that I really enjoy. Um, this uh, feels really great. It applies to the skin really nicely. And again, we're not dealing with any types of textural issues like pilling issues with reapplication. I don't detect a white cast on this at all. Now this definitely has a dewy finish to it. Um, the shiniest one in the video is Isentry, for sure. Um, but this one I would say is probably about half of what Isentry is offering. So if you like a little dew, but you don't like to go really close to the edge, this is gonna give you that kiss of dew that you might be seeking without really overwhelming the skin. And this is, like I said, some kind of a middle of the road um, kind of feel on the skin. It's not the lightest, but I still find it very comfortable on the skin. I still find it very breathable on the skin. And I've worn this a lot during the summertime and I don't feel that it is oh, like oppressing. You know what I mean? So some sunscreens can feel so thick on the skin. And so while this offers a little bit more um, texture wise, it's not overwhelming the skin. I think it dries on the skin really, really nicely. And drum roll, my number one pick. Can you guess? It is the Skin 1004 Hyaluseca Water Fit Sun Serum. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus four. And the superpowers here, the reason why it's number one for me and my skin is just, it is so comfortable. It is so light, it is so breathable. Dare I say this feels invisible on the skin. And um, that's something I actually really value in sunscreen for my daily go-to sunscreen. Again, we're not talking about water resistant sports types of sunscreens. We're not talking beach and vacation sunscreens here. This is just how do I stay consistent with my sunscreen habit every single day? Because it's not always fun to wear sunscreen. I just wanna be honest about that. I talk about how important it is. I know how important it is and there are some days where it actually is a struggle for me to put it onto my skin because it doesn't always feel good there's a good chance if i'm trying new products there's a good chance it's going to irritate my sensitive skin i just never know and um yeah that's how i feel about it so it is kind of like an ongoing thing it's always an ongoing journey with sunscreen and wearing it every single day that's what i value about this sunscreen so much it is so light it is so breathable i can forget that i applied it on my skin it never irritates my skin. Even when my skin is irritated from other things, it never bothers my skin. It is just so 
reliable. If I don't want to wear sunscreen that day, I can put this on and I never regret it. You know what I'm saying? I never feel icky or greasy or heavy or like I can't breathe and I'm suffocated. This always works. So interesting here. The filters for all new generation chemical filters are the same as three of, it, it's the third product with the exact same filters. Interesting, right? And yet every single one offers a little bit of something different. Again, it's not just about filters. It's about how things are formulated, how they're balanced, percentages, and other ingredients involved. Texture wise, this is probably the closest to the Goodall sunscreen because the other formula that shares these filters was Beauty of Jason, very moisturizing, creamy, right? Goodall, a little bit more of that thin gel consistency, and that's exactly what we have here with Skin 1004. It's a very light gel consistency. I don't really feel like maybe a little bit of hydration, but I don't feel like balancing moisture or anything. I really um, think that this is such a lightweight formula. It's not adding much to the skin, but that's actually what I really like. It's just giving you that layer of protection on your skin, and it is not giving you like the kiss of dew. It's a very, very much a neutral finish and if I had to go side to side I would say maybe maybe Goodall has a hint of due to it compared to Skin 1004. Um, they are very actually incredibly similar. Um, I just came across Skin 1004 first <laughs> before Goodall so this is kind of a little bit higher in my mind because of that and if I had to compare this is probably slightly more neutral. And I really think that um, Skin 1004, just as a general brand, I've tried so much from them. They really excel at formulating for those who do have oily skin types. I personally don't, but I still really like how this feels on my skin. They really excel at that and humid and hot climates is really who they have in mind um, for all of their skincare products. And that's exactly you know what this sunscreen does. It feels really light, really breathable, not overwhelming on the skin. It's not adding any shininess to your skin. It's just working with what you got. And I, 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 I like that. I don't want a sunscreen that takes anything away from my skin because I, I can't suffer from dryness and I do like dew on my skin. I just usually like to achieve it with other products besides sunscreen. And so I like that this just respects what's already happening on my face. It gives me that layer of protection, but it just doesn't bug me. It doesn't overwhelm me. It doesn't irritate me. Like I said, on days that I don't want to wear sunscreen, I'll just reach for this because I know that it is not going to, when I say irritate me, I don't necessarily mean like irritate my skin. I just mean like irritate me. You know what I'm saying? Some sunscreens irritate me. Um, I don't like how they feel on my skin. I always so I hope you enjoyed that fun little video, just sort of like rounding up some of my favorite current sunscreens. I'm curious to know what you're wearing right now and what you think about it, because I'm always on the lookout for something new. Let me know in the comment box below. I have to say we're really spoiled for choices these days. We've really gone through a renaissance period and there's so many great formulas on the market now. If you enjoyed this video, by the way, it helps you out. Maybe you found a new sunscreen you're interested in, but you haven't hit subscribe to my channel just yet. Wait a second, don't go. Um, if you enjoyed this, please, I would be so honored if you would hit subscribe and come join our community. I do release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week. I do full length videos, I do shorts, I talk a lot about Korean skincare. So hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are. I love you so much. Thanks for being here with me today and I'll talk to you soon.